So I'm reading this book about 14th century France, and holy shit, you want to talk about a strong contender for the worst time and place to live in recorded history? There's one for you. I mean, you know, let's first acknowledge that I almost can't help but address that question from a position of privilege. Because if you're gay or trans or black or a woman, your worst time and place to be spectrum is way broader than mine. But if you're looking for a time and place where it sucked for pretty much everybody, rich or poor, man or woman, minority or otherwise, 14th century France has a lot going for it. You know, the obvious one is the Black Death, right? Literally a third of the population is going to die in agony before that's over. But you've also got a Catholic Church that's corrupt even by the historical standards of the Catholic Church. You got the Hundred Years' War raging on and off. You've got a papal schism, which matters for political purposes, but also weighs heavily on the minds of people who took this Pope shit hella serious in their day-to-day -day lives back then. Right? You've also got ever-increasing taxes, peasant uprisings, food shortages, widespread brigandage. And you know, brigandage doesn't sound all that bad because it's old-timey and nobody that we've ever met has ever had to worry about brigandage. But just imagine how, like, gee, I hope I can get to moms and back without being set upon by an organized band of thieves affects your sense of well-being. And of course, with the benefit of retrospect and rationalism, we can look back on that era and we can see the terrible confluence of events that swirled together to create that unique vortex of misery. The plague from flea-ridden rats, the peasant results from the unrecognized increase in the value of labor after so many people died, the unending war from organizing your culture around warlike traits and then running out of easy Muslim cities to steal, et cetera, et cetera. But back then they had neither retrospect nor rationalism so when you read the contemporary accounts, they have the whys and wherefores hilariously wrong. Granted, some people got shit right. There are plenty of warnings from back then that higher taxes to pay for the war were going to lead to peasant uprisings even before they happened. There was very little illusion about the level of corruption in the church or the pivotal role that that was playing in the general shittiness of the century. Some people even put together the link between filth and disease. But for every one of those correct guesses, and they were just guesses, there are a thousand other people blaming everything from declining morals to the position that the planets were in to bad air. And bizarrely, inexplicably, one of the chief culprits in accounts across the continent and throughout the century that you will hear listed right alongside of like selling indulgences and sexual promiscuity or whatever is the sinful debauchery of pointy shoes. No fucking clue. Apparently they were all the rage back then. The chic set back in the 1300s were all running around in these fucking ridiculous pointy shoes. And, and don't think like jester shoes that like turn up at the end. These things just kept going. They, they looked like over sharpened pencils and they must have hurt like hell to wear. And they had become this symbol of decadence for the same reason that, like, you know, high-heeled shoes might. They don't serve a function other than fashion, so they become an emblem of excess. And so religious and thought leaders all over Europe would take to the pulpit or the page or the fucking street corner to decry the moral depravity of pointy shoes. Why is God killing our families with festering boobos? Pointy shoes. Why won't he protect his faithful flock from robbers on their way home from church? Pointy shoes. Why won't he bring peace to this war that's cost so many generations of young men? Pointy fucking shoes. Of course, pointy shoes weren't the only stupid reason that they gave for the miseries of their day. They also complained that society was oversexed. The people had strayed too far from God. Women were getting too uppity. Immigrants were undermining their culture. Too few people attended mass and nobody wanted to work these days. And all of those reasons are exactly as accurate and intelligent as blaming the bubonic plague on pointy shoes. The difference, of course, is that we still use all those other ones every time we feel like the world is going to shit. The point is that all these jackasses blaming the world's problem on gay marriage and bottom surgery are going to sound exactly as dumb as the pointy shoes guys to the history buffs of the future. When they go to read about the downfall of liberal democracy in the 21st century, the historian's going to take a break from talking about, like, you know, decreased trust in institutions in light of mass surveillance, internal divisions driven by early adopters of social media. Wait, wait, whatever the 2020 hindsight of history blames our generational suckitude on ultimately. And they'll give their readers a quick laugh by quoting from the contemporary dumbasses who blamed everything on dudes sucking each other's dicks. 
And, th and that's comforting in a small and vindictive way, right? Knowing that your nemesis's place in history is slated to be comic relief. But it's also the kind of fact that you just might be able to weaponize. Look, the thing that shook me from my very deep-rooted prescriptivist tendencies, that is my belief that you weren't doing language right unless you were following the rules that I was taught in grade school, was reading quotes from supposedly intelligent historical figures freaking the fuck out because people had started saying walked and looked instead of walked and looked. They were right every bit as much as I was getting bent out of shape over stuff like nuclear and library and knowing how dumb they sounded to me and how dumb I would sound once society just accepted these more natural pronunciations swayed me when nothing else did. You know, look, I, I get that some people are beyond reach, but some people who seem like they are aren't. And sometimes all it takes to see how much of an asshole you're being is a historical mirror. Maybe showing some of these zealots how perfectly their complaints line up with the lists that culminated in pointy shoes back in the day is going to show them how silly they will sound to the future. Or, you know what, maybe it'll just divert their attention to the scourge of pointy shoes. Either way, I feel like it's a win for social justice.